So we've been discussing the vapor compression cycle and some pieces of equipment like split AC units with the DX coil or chillers that utilize that cycle to provide mechanical cooling. So now we want to get a little more comfortable with walking up to some of these devices and being able to identify what type of components they have. So we're going to start with the compressors. Those are really the engines of the vapor compression cycle. And a good way to start is by walking up to the nameplate of a chiller and looking up the chiller manual and seeing how the numbers and the letters in that model number correspond to different product features. So one that I'll point out is this, this nominal capacity. Here, and just using train as an example, C40 corresponds to 40 tons. It may not be quite that clean, but in this case, we can see that this chiller was designed to handle 40 tons max worth of output capacity. So, there's also an indication that there's four compressors that are equally sized. It, it may not be obvious if there's a, some type of coil guard on this air-cooled chiller, but if you were to take that guard off, you'd see four compressors right next to each other in a modular format that are providing that 40 tons when they work together. Now that also should mean that it's a four-stage chiller, which means unless the piping is, is piped in some type of backup format, that those compressors can operate individually or together to provide anywhere from 10, 20, 30, or 40 tons of cooling. And that becomes important as we look at equipment performance later on about how these load management devices are able to meet part load conditions. So the compressors themselves come in a couple different varieties. So we're going to look first at the scroll compressor. And that's the one that when we were looking at the split AC device and opened up the condensing unit, we saw this sitting right next to the condensing coil. So these are kind of the, the biggies for the smaller units. When you put them in a modular format, you might see a chiller uh, up to 200 tons or so that is utilizing a, a number of these. So they're, they're, they're fairly common, and the way they operate is with these scroll units here, you can see, that stack on top of one another. And they're a little off-center, so when they rotate, they're squeezing bits of gas. It's a positive displacement pressurization that forces the refrigerant around the loops. Another type of compressor is reciprocating. And it's just what it sounds like, and if you imagine a V-shaped engine with the pistons alternating up and down, that's really what you get reciprocating compressor. So the benefit here is that you have oil sitting in this in this oil pan type portion of the compressor and that's different than a lot of the other compressors that have oil going through the refrigerant loop. You actually have oil mixed in with the refrigerant such that you don't burn up your compressor from too much friction with this different ways of pressurizing. So in this case you get good reliability with the reciprocating compressors at least from, an, from a lubrication standpoint because you are housing that oil centrally and it doesn't you don't have to worry about it going around the loop too much and getting far away from the compressor if it's cycling on and off. So have screw compressors. They have a pretty wide range and the way that they operate is with two helical gears that are going to screw next to each other and just like the scroll compressor they're going to trap some of that gas and squeeze it, pressurize it down into the loop. You might get a little bit of leakage here but it covers a pretty wide range of chiller capacity, but as you get into the higher tonnage, that's really where you see the centrifugal compressors taking over. So for water-cooled compressors, the, these are really going to be the biggies that you're going to see. It's the oldest compressor type. Um, in, in some ways, it's the simplest when you think that the way that you're pressurizing is really by either one or a series of spinning plates that are really flinging the refrigerant from the eye of an impeller, a spinning disc, to some discharge straight down. So it comes in a wide variety of tonnage, but they can get they get pretty big, and you can run them with a variable frequency drive, so they, they can handle really good part load conditions if they're sized well. And the way that we're going to evaluate that is is kind of like a like a pump. As we get into pumping systems, you look up performance curves to see how these how these compressors operate. So I put a summary here just to kind of give an indication about where you might see these application wise. So again the heavy hitter is really the centrifugal chiller at the top and on the bottom you get the scroll compressors that are able to really operate in a modular format to meet some 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 smaller medium commercial HVAC loads. So with that we're going to move on to looking at some typical HVAC heating configurations but 
before you move on to that, there's a link in the comment section to take you to some practice exercises that will reinforce what we've learned looking at these cooling systems.